just like to add my word of welcome to everyone who have come along this afternoon. A lovely, dry Lord's Day afternoon, and we give you a very warm welcome in the Lord's precious name. I want to read a couple of verses, please, in the Old Testament, found in the book of Numbers. Numbers in chapter 10. And we're going to read verse 29 and 30. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Raguel the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, We are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. For the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart to mine own land and to my kindred. Now over in the New Testament, please, the Gospel of, of Luke. I want to read a few verses here. Verse number 30. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and what trouble thou spendest more? When I come again, I will repay thee. Now we know that the God of heaven will bless the public reading of his own precious and fallible word this afternoon. Something before my mind, dear friend, I want us to think of men on their journeys, men on their journeys. I want us to think of a journey and its destination. And I want us to think of an invitation given to this man, Hobab, and his refusal to come. Now, we've all taken a journey this afternoon, some longer than others. We knew what time to leave our homes to get here at the approximate time. But I want us to think of a journey that you and I are on, dear friend, that we don't know how long it will be when it will end. It is going to end. You know, for many today in the country, in this big wide world, that they tell us that there are eight billion people in, for many that journey has ceased, it has come to a close, it has ended. And they tell us, my friend, that 105 people die every minute. 105 people leave time for eternity. And you think the little time that will be here this afternoon for maybe approximately 25 minutes or so. You think how many will leave time for eternity, friend, with a precious, never-dying soul within their bosom that's going to live the lifetime of God. Either in heaven's glory or in hell's gloom, friend. And it's what you and I do while here upon earth in time with God's blessed Son will determine where you and I will be in eternity. The word itself occurs only once in the Bible. You know that, don't you? Isaiah 57 and verse 15. Thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity whose name is holy. And you and I, my friends, when we live and count it down, we have to do with a holy God who doesn't look lightly upon your sin and mine. There are some things I want us to think about a journey, very simple things. I want us to think of the commencement of our journey, friend. You and I commenced a journey today. I left Bangor at about ten past two. You left your home in Port of Ogie to get here. We all commenced a journey, some longer than others. 
But you know the journey that we commenced in time, friend? We had a bad commencement to it. A bad start. We had not. Every single one of us, rich or poor, doesn't matter. All of us had a bad start on the journey of life. Psalm so David reminds us in Psalm 51 and verse 5. He says, Behold, I was shaven in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. That's the way you and I commenced, my friend. A little boy, a little girl born into the world. We commence from the same status. You see, we stand upon the same platform this afternoon. I may be looking down at you today, but you know, the level, my friend, we all stand on the same platform. We're all status as sinners. Sinners by practice. Sinners by nature and by practice, friend. The psalmist reminds us in Psalm 58 and verse number 3, he says, The wicked are estranged. From the womb, they go astray as soon as they be born. Ah, yes, it, my friend. And this journey of life, man has gone astray. He's on a downward road. He's gone astray. Does not Isaiah remind us in chapter 53 and verse number 6? He says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's how we commence, friend. And the speed that you and I are travelling at on this journey of life is the same. 60 seconds to the minute, 60 minutes to the hour, 24 hours to the day. We're all travelling, friend, to eternity. And you know as well as I do, friend, I hope you do. That in eternity, there are one of two places that you and I will be for all eternity. A heaven, bright and fair. There are many mountains there, one of which thou mayest share. Will you come? Will you come with us? This man, Hobab, was given a glorious invitation one day. Come now with us. And we will do thee good, for the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. But you know, the other side of the coin, as it were, my friend, we have to warn you faithfully today from this little platform. There's an awful place of woe. There's a hell where sinners go. If you die unsaved, but oh... Will you come? Listen to the invitation whilst he's crying. Come, friend. Come as a sweet invitation of grace. Come unto Jesus, the soul's resting place. Come for the suffering for sinners is done. Come for the Father's well pleased and his Son. There was one, my friend, who left the heights of glory. Came into this world his hands had made. We're reminded from the epistle to the Galatians in chapter 4 and verse number 3 and 4 says, But when the fullness of the time was come, that exact moment in the annals of history, friend, that exact moment when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Think of the reception that he received. He came unto his own. His own received him not. He was in the world. The world knew him not, friend. In spite of it all, that blessed one we sing sometimes, in spite of rejection and hatred and loss, his love led him onward to Calvary's cross. Through waves and through billows, through darkness and pain, Oh, Jesus, my Saviour, loves triumph to gain. What does he mean to you, friend? What do you think of him today in Port of Hockey Harbour here? What think you of Christ? It's a test to try both to state and your scheme. You cannot be right in the rest unless you think rightly of him. A man who came, friend. A man who knew no sin, who did no sin, 
And then him is no sinner all. What a glorious Saviour. And he can be yours this afternoon. In the seat in which you sit here in your car. And you don't have to raise a hand or sign a card for being a thought friend. You come in God's simple way. How simple is God's way of salvation? Not trying or doing one's best. But just on believing in Jesus. The weary and the sinful can find rest. I wonder if the sin burden you this afternoon, friend. Every day you live in your sins, you know that burden gets heavier and it weighs the man down. And if not forgiven in time, friend, it will bring him down to an eternal hell at Sodom today. But your sins can all be forgiven. A righteous basis has been laid. God's blessed Son has died upon the cross who his own self bear our sins. In his own body upon the tree, he has once suffered for sins, friend. The just, for we the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. What does it think of the course that man has taken in this journey? The course, you know, the wise preacher tells us, in the book of Proverbs, twice over, the same verse is repeated. Chapter 14 and 12, chapter 16 and 25, you will say, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Could I ask you, dear friend, today, what way are you traveling on? You see, the Bible makes it clear that there are two ways. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13 and 14 tells us, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is a gate, and broad is a way, that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is a gate, and narrow is a way, which leadeth unto life. And few... There'd be that find it. Are you amongst the many on the broad road? Are you amongst the few? Ask yourself that question, friend. The prophet Haggai tells us or asks the question in chapter 1 and verse 5 and 7, twice over again. He says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. I want you to consider your ways today. As you sit in your car. Is the way that you're travelling on. Is it the right way? Is it going to end up in heaven friend? Jeremiah reminds us in chapter 21 and verse 8. Says unto this people I shall say. Look saith the Lord. Behold I set before you the way of life. And the way of death. What's the way you're travelling on friend? You know, there's only one way to heaven. One way God says to get to heaven. Jesus is the only way. Men around us are depending on their religion. Depending on their good works. A religion without Christ. Works of righteousness, the hymn writer has said, all in vain. It's Jesus alone can save him. Jesus alone. You see, the salvation in your Bible and my Bible speaks about this afternoon is all wrapped up in a glorious person now. And you miss him in life. You're going to miss everything. Far better you've never seen the harbour here in Porta Vogue. Than one day, my friend, to leave time for eternity without Christ. Without the knowledge that all is well with my soul for eternity. Can I ask you today, how are you going to leave time? You know, there's two ways men leave this world. There's people who die in faith. We read about them in Hebrews 11. These all died in faith. You see, faith in Christ will save you, friend. Sinner, trust God's risen Son. 
Trust the work that he has done to his arms. Now quickly run, for I tell you without the shadow of a doubt, faith in Christ will save you. Then there's the people who die without mercy. The Lord Jesus speaking to the Jews in John 8 and 21. He says, I go my way and you shall seek me and shall die, die in your sin. Whether I go, you cannot come. Be a sad business, my friend, for the dear one around Port of Hoggy, with all its privileges. The many times that you've heard this wonderful, glorious message concerning God's beloved Son, be a tragedy now. If you were to die in your sin, miss heaven. You say, if you miss Christ in life, you're going to miss heaven, friend. You make no mistake about it. What about the course that they're on? Is it the right course? You know, I was thinking not only the course, but I was thinking of a change that is required on this journey. You know, we take some journeys in life and we need to take a change, don't we? Make a change. I'm thinking particularly of maybe the train. I've been on the train recently. And if you were to take a train from Bangor and you wanted to go to, say, Dublin, well, you couldn't take a direct train from Bangor to Dublin. You would have to change, first of all, in Belfast and then get the connection to Dublin. You see, in life, friend, if you are going to be in heaven, there's a final change required on the journey of life. A final change. The religious man needs it to know. He needs a change. Because there was a man called Nicodemus. And if religion could have fitted a man for heaven, he must have been right up there. The top of the ladder. But that what have you to know, Nicodemus? And when the Lord Jesus told him one day, Nicodemus, you must be born again. An old preacher was asked one time, why do you preach so often on you must be born again? You must be born again. The man says, simply because you must be born again. That's it, friend. You must be born again or never enter heaven. There's only blood-washed ones are there. They're ransomed and forgiven. Do you know anything about the new birth, friend? Has there ever been a time in life to experience when you've taken sides with God? You see, that's what repentance is. That's what the change is required, friend. A taking sides with God against your sins. And turning from your sins in repentance. It's nothing new, you know. No, no. Paul preached in Acts 20 and 21. What did he preach? Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Lord Jesus preached it. As a matter of fact, in two verses twice over, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, verse 3 and 5, he says to the hearers one day, Except, except you repent. You shall all likewise perish. Has there ever been repentance, friend? You know, the, the wise preacher reminds us in the book of, of Proverbs, chapter 28 and verse 13, he says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. That's what it is, friend. It's not just merely been sorry for one sin, because many a man has been sorry today for his sins, as it were. And the next day, he's been found dabbling in the same old sin that he said he was sorry for. No, no, my friend. It's a turning from sin altogether. An about turn. You know, the old preachers used to tell us there was one good thing about a broad road. One good thing. You know what it is? There's plenty of room to turn. Plenty of room to turn in the car park today, isn't there? There's plenty of room to turn on the broad road, friend. For turn you must, if ever you're going to be in God's heaven at the end of life's little journey. Ah, there's a choice to be made on this journey, isn't there? 
Hobab one day was faced with a choice. He was given an invitation from Moses. Come, thou with us, and we will do the good. For the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. What did he say? I says, I will not go. I will not go. But I will depart to my own land and to my kindred. Sad business. The hymn writer said, Who oh, could I hear? Some sinners say, I will go. I will go. My old companions, fare you well. I will not go with you to hell. I mean with Jesus Christ to dwell. I will go. Oh, that God would give us a roof today in the little car park here in Port of Fogey. No, her mother-in-law said to her, return now. Ah, she says, well, thou goest, I will go. Thy people shall be my people. Thy God shall be my God. Are you just going because your mother-in-law is going with? Ah, no, she says, thy God. Thy God shall be my God. Ah, friend, it says about her, but Naomi, when she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. But finally, have you ever thought about the conclusion of the journey, friend? The journey is going to conclude now. Ah, yes, it's going to end. The solemn question is asked in 1 Peter 4 and 17. Could we ask it to you today, this, this afternoon? What shall the end be? Hey? Eh? What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? You have heard it another time, friend, in a stammering way from the speaker. The gospel is of God to magnify his Son. For God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not tarry, but have everlasting life. One of these days, my friend, you and I will leave the sea, maybe suddenly, maybe a pain in the chest, sudden heart attack, and we'll be way out, over the boundary line. There's a time I know not when, a place I know not where, that seals the destiny of man for glory or despair. And you know something, friend? Two ways before you lie. And you the choice must make. One upward to the sky, one downward to the lake. Will any choose the path of woe? Each soul must answer yes. Or no. Oh, would you not think of this invitation, friend? Come now with us, and we will do thee good. For the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. The words of the Lord Jesus, he invites you today. In Matthew 11 and 28, he says, Come unto me, all ye that never you see, not excluded. The invitation goes out to all. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Listen to the promise of a God who cannot lie. I will give you rest. May you come today and all your need. Trust God's blessed Son. Trust the work that he has done. To his arms now quickly run. For I tell you without the shadow of a doubt, faith in Christ will save me. May it be so this afternoon for his name's sake shall we pray. Our Father, we come to thee another time. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus, thank thee for a Saviour true and tried, who can cleanse the very deepest pride, and for send them justified as only come. Come, for all things are now ready. What a provision thou hast made in the death of thy lovely Son at the place called Calvary. We pray to bless the goings forth of the Gospel this afternoon. The good word of God may fall into good ground today, and bear fruit for thy glory. The glory shall be all thy own. And the blessing, Lord, shall be ours. We ask now for thy parting blessing and give thanks for our coming together in the Lord Jesus precious and worthy name. Amen. Thank you one and all this afternoon for coming. Remember the meeting next Lord's Day at the same hour of three o'clock. Thank you again. <laughs>